Alright, hello everyone. This is Liam, the producer of Open Mic Show. You probably notice I'm speaking English. Yeah, I know. I'm usually I'm speaking Mandarin, but in time of sometimes we are trying to know more critical information and to seek out the truth. I will step out of my comfort zone and talk in this non-native way, like Chinglish style, mm -hmm. but all right, so the issue is like this. Recently, there have been multiple cases, like uh, attack some people, someone just attack Asian Americans. And so in some cases, uh, very violently. And one case, uh, an Asian old man died days after he was attacked. It's very shocking. And uh, to we, we want to know how can we deal with this situation and how can we, well, how can we characterize this evil doing. And today we are happy to have a guest who serves uh, as Deputy Attorney General in California Department of Justice. He is also a member of a nonprofit organization. Actually, he's a board member. It's called Chinese for Affirmative Action. His name is Eric J. Chong. Welcome to our show, Jay. Eric. Hi, Liam. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for your time. Could you give more information about yourself and what you do? Of course, of course. Uh, as Liam said, I'm a Deputy Attorney General for the uh, California Department of Justice. Uh, the California Department of Justice uh, prosecutes crime, and then they also represent the state of California in lawsuits uh, brought by other entities. So there's a there's two sides to the to the job. Prior to this position, I was a, a prosecutor for the U.S. DOJ in uh, Sacramento, and before that, I was a, a white collar defense attorney in Washington D.C. Yeah. So Eric, I read an article you wrote. wrote and they published in uh, the Mockery News. And the title is Anti-Asian Attacks Should Be Recognized as Hate Crimes. Could you give, uh, give us a brief introduction uh, of your ideas? Yes, yes, I'm happy to do that. Thank you for reading the article. Um, you know, what, what drove uh, me to write this was, was really frustration, right? I was very frustrated that the media that, uh, you know, people that I've been speaking to, everybody recognizes that these crimes are anti-Asian, right? Um, you know, when you look at the celebrities that have been speaking out, everybody acknowledges that, you know, these crimes are, are anti-Asian crimes. But at the same time, law enforcement and state authorities, local authorities, they have not been recognizing these crimes as hate crimes. And that's problematic because clearly race is a part of the issue, right? If you're yes. calling it anti-Asian, race is clearly part of an issue. But at the same time, uh, if, if it's not being recognized as a hate crime, it's not showing up in data. And without data, you can't make, cha you can't make real uh, changes. Yeah, I, I noticed that you mentioned a word like other authorities or local law enforcement. So my question is, who actually has to have the final say? Like, who decides it's a crime, a hate crime or not? Who has the authority to say that? Yeah, uh, there's there's all sorts of different authorities, right? So so one, the, the police have to bring the case as a hate crime, or at least recognize that as a charge. Have, they have to investigate that as a hate crime, right? Yeah. Then the district attorney, the district attorney's office also has the power to choose whether or not to add a hate crime charge or reduce it or, or maybe take away the hate crime charge. So they have the power to look at this too, right? And then the district attorney's office and, and, uh, and the police, those are both law enforcement authorities, but even outside of law enforcement, right? The, the mayor's office, the, the, um, the, the reporting authorities as a part of the state, the governor, right? All of these, all of these authorities, when depending on what uh, entity is asking for this information, they all have um, some sort of say in whether or not 
you know, something is recognized as a hate crime. You know, I, I spoke about this a little bit in, in my article where I say, you know, the FBI relies on state authorities to give them the information about how many hate crimes are occurring in their state or in their location, right? That information doesn't only come from the police and the district attorney, it comes from, uh, you know, reports that the state compiles together. So there are people working in the state, there are people working uh, in local counties who have to compile this data, put it together, and send it to the FBI? All right, all of these people uh, are responsible. So you or at least have some part to play. Yeah, this FBI report on hate crime. Let's say, why does it matter? Like, uh, w what has anything to do with just normal people like like us? Yeah, yeah, uh, that's a great question. Um, data is the first step to making change, and that's why it's important, right? Because if, if the FBI, when they see this and they don't see that Asians are, are being targeted, they don't see that, um, you know, that this is a problem, then there are no resources that are going to be diverted to addressing this issue. But with this uh, resource, could you be more specifically what this resource can do? And usually, where if it's money, I would say, or found, where 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 the, this purpose for to to spend those money on? Yeah, yeah. So so it it is money, but it's also just time and energy, right? Because you, you, to give you an example, I think uh you know if if we could show that you know these crimes against Asian Americans are truly a problem, right? And maybe that we can show that people really are targeting. Uh, you know, first generation immigrants in, you know, Chinatowns. Well, one of the things that I think that could help this is if we put Chinese language reporting, right? Mm. As an as an option. If people can start reporting these crimes in Chinese language in like hotline of English, or something, right? Exactly. Exactly. But we're never gonna get that if the if the federal government doesn't recognize this, you know, to be a problem in the first place. So could you tell us uh, what's um, m which party in the the parties you mentioned, right? Like uh, law enforcement or mayor or other authorities, which party now seemingly s most not willing to bring this up, like uh, characterize it as hate crime? Can, do you have this information? No, I, I you know I, I don't know that I do. Um, you know I, I'm frustrated with with with. Uh you know, a lot of different parties here, right? There's a lot of different parties that are not recognizing that this is hate crimes. And, oh. and you know, and this can be for a variety of reasons, but, um, you know, the, the fact of the matter is that, you know, that's not, that's not right, right? Yeah, so recently we have another news uh, caught uh, our attention. It's like uh, the San Francisco mayor, London Breed. He addressed, uh, maybe in a private or just a not very officially uh, occasion. She she mentioned that the media coverage on those attacks, she thought was uh, just very divisive or some somewhat divisive because she thought it that's too much. Uh, it's kind of stirred up some uh, sentiments in our community, like. Uh, why this thing can cannot be reported or covered as they are because this this we saw those footage right it caught on the camera and uh, we saw how this thing unfolded in front of our eyes it's so so shockingly cruel and uh, do you think her comment make any sense to you or it doesn't make much sense to me you know, I, I'm not familiar with the comment, but, um, you know, I, I can only assume, right, that, uh, that I, I, you know, I, I think, the, I think, I guess it comes down to, to what specifically, um, I guess which incident she's addressing specifically, or if she's talking about these as a whole. Um, but, but, you know, the fact of the matter is that calling something a hate crime, right, shouldn't, shouldn't be divisive. If, it, if it's a hate crime, then calling it what it is, I, you know, I don't. I I have no idea why that would be a problem. Um, yeah. So then it it comes to the the issue of what exactly cr hate crime is, right? How do you define right. it to be exactly? Right. right. Yeah. The state of California defines a hate crime, right, to be uh, a crime where a victim is chosen because of their membership in a protected class. So if you choose your victim based on race 
on religion, on sexual orientation, uh, that is a hate crime. You know, it, 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 what, the confusing aspect to this, I think that a lot, and, and the part I think that a lot of people misunderstand, and, and the part that I tried to get across in my article, is that it doesn't have to be related to hate. Hate is not a necessary factor of a hate crime. If you choose your victim based on race, regardless of what the reason is, if you choose them based on race, if you choose them based on gender, sexual orientation, or religion, that's a hate crime. But you mentioned the term, it's called either protected group or... Yeah. Uh, but like you said, how, how can we... It's only that much or it can be expanded or it, it, it varies from time to time. That's my question. It's like how... It's, for me, it's still very ambiguous and it's not very precisely, not pre precise enough to, to make me like, oh yeah, I can t tell in a second this is a hate crime or not. Um, you know, well, maybe I didn't explain it clearly because you know, when I say a protected class, I mean race, I mean gender, I mean sexual orientation and religion, right? Yeah. It, those are the protected classes. I, I might have missed one, but, but I think, the, you know, if, it, if you choose your victim based on any of those reasons, that's a hate crime. And it's non-discriminated, right? It's like no matter what kind of race, like even yeah. you're, you're white, right. if somebody attack you because of your white, then still yep. it's a hate crime. That's true, right? Of that's correct, yes. right? Yes, 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 oh, cool. exactly. And, and if, you're an, if you're an Asian person, right, and you choose to attack somebody because he's Asian, it doesn't matter if you're the same race, right? That's mm. still a hate crime too. If I, choose the, if I choose my victim based on race, that's enough. All right. You know, one of my, one of my favorite, uh, not favorite, but one of my, uh, you, you, I think one of the most interesting instances of, of hate crime prosecution to me is, uh, you know, in the 90s, um, there was a group of fraudsters who, who purposely crashed their cars into Asian drivers, right? And this is a, 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 an insurance fraud scam, right? They, they purposely targeted Asian drivers and crashed their cars into them. And the reason they did this was that they, would, they could file fraudulent insurance claims and say that, oh, the Asian driver did it, right? Because there's a stereotype that Asians are bad drivers, right? They mm. purposefully took advantage of this stereotype to, you know, to scam insurance companies, right? And the interesting part of this, right, is that the scammers do not hate Asian people, right? There's no evidence that they hate Asians. They just took advantage of a stereotype, right? But the New York district attorney, right, yeah. took, recognized that this is still a hate crime because they're choosing their targets based on race. And yeah. that's enough, right? That's a hate crime. Yeah, that's very interesting to know because in your article, you also have this term called opportunistic bias crimes. Who, who, has, who, who brought up this definition and what's the, the, what's the difference between this term and the, the hate crime? What's the most difference? Yeah, yeah. So an opportunistic bias crime is a term I think that legal scholars have developed in, in legal writing. A professor, I think, popularized the term. Uh, I, I don't know how long ago, but it's a term now to to basically refer to the types of crimes that I've just you know sort of brought to your attention. Yeah. Right? It's this type of it's this type of crime where it's a it's a hate crime. Opportunistic bias crimes are hate crimes, but they are not based on hate. Right? They're based on some sort of bias and some sort of opportunity. Right? You think that because of uh, the race, it you know, it represents some some sort of you know economic opportunity for you. Yeah. So it must be the perpetrator saw some opportunities in those victims, so they they started right. their attack. But from right. some cases, I I couldn't see any opportunity except for just pure hate. Yeah. So, so in many cases, I think the cases that are, that are the crimes that are uh, motivated by hate, like you said, right, are also, that's a hate crime also, but that's not an opportunistic bias crime or, or probably is not. Right. So I think mm -hmm. we're talking now about two different things, right? Because if, if a crime is motivated by hate and maybe you hate a racial group, maybe, uh, you know, pe some people who have been attacking these, you know, elderly Asian seniors actually hate Asian people. Well, that's that's certainly a hate crime, right? 
The type of crime that I'm also talking about that's also a hate crime, though, is if you don't hate Asian people, right, but you know that Asian people may or may not speak English very well, right? And they and you know that they, they're not going to be able to report this to the police, right, because maybe they don't trust police. Uh, that's also a hate crime because you're oh. taking advantage, right, of, because you chose your victim based on race. Yeah, it's kind of like you take advantage of certain people's uh, either weakness or their disadvantage, exactly. right? So that exactly. makes also that make their action also hate crime. But let's talk about yes. more about hate crime because this term is so big, huh? And this is so eye catching. But also, I just don't quite understand it because what like uh, what's the spirit? Of the lawmaking, what's the law re rationale behind this uh, lawmaking? It's like uh, the the lawmaker want to regulate the people's hatred, like uh, uh, to 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 drop this this uh, this uh, text to just try to. Do you think that can possibly achieved, and how can we? Because for me, like I couldn't really see through people, like if you really hate some certain group or not, because it's just so hard to tell. How how can it? Could you give us some insight of this nature of the hate crime? Yeah, so I think there's a kind of a two part question, right, that you asked there, right. The first is, you know, what legislators were thinking about when they drafted hate crime legislation. You know, in, 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 on that front, you know, I, I, it's hard for me to guess, you know, exactly what motivated legislators to write these hate crimes. But one of the arguments supporting hate crime legislation, right, is that it, hate crime legislation is meant to protect groups that have historically been taken advantage of, right? And that's, that's I think, at least one of the arguments for why they exist. Um, I, I, you know, I can't say, you know, I can't get into the minds of the legislators' heads, but I can only assume that, you know, that's at least a, you know, a, a big factor in why uh, hate crime legislation exists. I think the second question that you asked um, has to do with, I guess, whether or not we're, we are legislating uh, hate, right? And to me, at, at least that that's not the case. I think it's, like I said, this is about protecting a, a class of, of, of people. It's not, I think it's less about, um, I think it's more about protecting the victim than it is about, um, I think, like punishing somebody for, for you know, I, I, you know, I guess for, for being hateful. To ca categorize certain crime into hate crime. It's all it's very hard. I mean, right? It, even in our cases, definitely the authority didn't rule on our favor. So we have to put more resources to fight this. So that's 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 what I saw the issue lies. So how can we make this process a little bit easier? Or maybe the process itself has problem. That's what I'm I'm trying to. I'm kind of debate myself, but I just want to hear some of your opinion. Yeah, I mean, the, the I think the problem that you're referring to, right, is a problem that applies to every law, right? Apl at least almost every criminal law, right? If if something is a you know is a murder or a robbery, right, it has to be recognized as a murder or a robbery, also, right? The police have to investigate it as a murder or a robbery. The district attorney has to charge it as a murder or a robbery. Right. And so I don't think hate crime legislation is any different than, uh, you know, other laws regulating criminal conduct. But for the robbery and the like murder, we have evidence or the consequence. We can saw it. Right. We can see it like uh, mm -hmm. if somebody died and we have the weapon and the stuff. We know we, we, we have enough supporting evidence so we can charge these people. Robbery is the same thing. But hate, I mean, hate is a, a state of mind. It's like, how can, I see we, what you're saying. Yeah. how can we just tell, okay, this is hate or this is not hate or maybe a little hate. Then this is not law anymore. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying, right? And, and but, but that applies to a lot of different laws, right? I, I think uh, if you look at fraud, right, fraud requires... Uh, intent, right? Intent, and you have the yeah, same, exactly. Right, and, and, and it has the same sort of uh, um, 
you know, difficulties, right? It's the same sort of, you have to prove what's, you know, you have to try to prove what somebody was thinking at the time. Right. 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 And, you, but, but, you know, that doesn't mean that, right. We stop regulating fraud. Right. Yeah, that's true. But it's also, we can only charge people because of the, the consequence, like the fraud, we have to have the proof like, oh, certain money have been scammed or the, 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 there's still some, something like tangible or visible, but it's hate, it's not, it's invisible. That's, that's okay, I, I, th right. I, I think what you're, it's uh, a hate crime has to, there has to be a crime at the end, right? Yeah, there's there's definitely a crime, so, so, visible yeah, crime. So, yeah, so so I think there still is something tangible, right, it, with regards to a hate crime, right? A, a hate crime is is a, if I if I punch somebody, right, there's still a physical uh, assault, let's say. Yeah, yeah, f yeah, physical assault that underlies that hate crime, right? Same thing if I choose to to defraud somebody because of their race, right? Um, there, you know, I think you have the same underlying evidence that you're referring to. Under current law, let's say the the guy who attacked the the ninety years old uh, uh, the, the the Asian old man and he died. We definitely know it's 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 murder, right? First, but uh, the, yeah, yeah. Then when we add the hate crime into his charge, what else? What it ach achieve? I mean, uh, does he have to bear longer prison time, or or what, or fine? It, yeah, it, it, so yeah, so it depends, right? Um, so hate crimes can be a separate charge, or it can also be an enhancement on top of the original charge, right? So so it can make the original crime more severe, mm. right? Or or it can be a crime on its own, and so it would depend on how it was charged. Um, or, or how that hate crime, uh, you know, enhancement was in char was was charged, but I think you know the but the the important part of this, not I mean not the important, but but I think one of the critical parts of this is that it needs to be recognized, right, as as a hate crime too, right? I think even if even if there was no um, uh, you know additional sentence, even mm -hmm. if there was no additional penalty, the fact of the matter, at least to me, is that it's important that it be recognized as a hate crime. For the for the data purposes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I understand that. So last year we witnessed uh, the the social movement like Black Black Lives Matter, right? There is a famous saying. It said, it says like this: All lives won't matter until Black Lives Matter. Uh, but recently, what we witnessed is, I don't know if this. Uh, murder we just mentioned uh, will be charged as uh, with a hate crime or not. But uh, this Asian man died just, I think he's definitely innocent, right? He, he, he shouldn't, sh he should not have died. And uh, w why his life don't matter? Or like, uh, where is the anger of the, the, the the community, like uh, we saw the uh, that victim last year, and they stirred up so much energy in the society. But it seems, yeah, that's a resentment in our community. It's like why our people died or beat up, and nobody really seem care. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's part of the frustration, right? That 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 has me, um, you know, thinking about these issues as much. Uh, you know, as I do also, right? Um, I mean, I, I, I can only agree with you, right? I, I, you, I, you know, I don't know, I guess, the specific incident that you're referring to, but when I watch these videos, like, you know, like you have, you know, it, it, it frustrates me to no end as well, right? I, I, I get very emotional about it. Um, so how can we help, be a help of ourselves? Like, how, yeah. or even how can we deal with, if, if we, we are attacked, let's say, what should yeah. we do when we report to the police? How can we make those crimes more noticeable at least, right? And yeah. in order to signal like we are, we cannot tolerate this anymore. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that's a great question about what sort of actionable items uh, can we do? And that's one of the questions that I've been getting the most. And I think one of the most important questions um, that, you know, that has come out of this I think there's two things, right? In the short, there's a short term and a, a long term, right? 
in the short term, I think what's important is that people report these crimes, right? And that people say something and do something when they see this crime happen, right? When they see something like this happen. And in addition to reporting these crimes to the police, I think there's a few nonprofits now that are working uh, to create their own sort of reporting uh, data center. And I think that's important um, to report your crimes to these data centers too. The first one is uh, Asian Americans Advancing Justice. They have a great reporting center where they report uh, on, on hate crimes against Asians. Um, another one is a Stop AAPI Hate. They also have a great reporting center um, that, and, and they've been you know, tracking different kinds of hate incidents. I think that's the sh what we can do in the short term. In the long term, though, I think uh, we need to look at systemic solutions, right? We need to um, look at investing, right, in in the in the sort of things that are causing this to happen in the first place. Um, I think that's an electing the right people into office. That's you know uh, supporting um, you know the right organizations that are doing the right thing to um, you know sort of solve this on a on a big global systemic level yeah could you maybe you can send me the information later on so i can put it under my video so when people saw the video on online they can click on the link all right yeah no i'd, I'd love to do that yeah so uh, one more thing we, we i want to hear from you is like uh, i heard in chinatown no matter in san francisco or auckland there uh there's there appears more young people. They organize themselves. It's more like a kind of like a vigilante way, or like just patrol their community. And uh, so far, it seems they're quite peaceful, right? They they don't even wear any uniform in some cases. Uh, do you think that will help help or do you encourage young people to join those uh, volunteers? You know, I think it's great that young people want to do something about it. I think that's really, really important. Um, you, you know, as in terms of it being like, a, I think, a solution to this, I, you know, I don't know if this, you know, they can do this forever, but I, you know, fully support people. Who, yeah, it's you know, very uh, costly, you know, right? Take it's this very costly. Right, right, right. And then, you know, they can't, they can't be everywhere, right? Yeah. I think that's, you know, that's one of the problems. There's some, you know, very real uh, limitations to it. But I, you know, I love that young people want to get involved and they see this as a way to you know support their community um you know and i love that about this um so I, so you know so i do support it i just uh you know question i guess the the long term efficacy yeah thank you so eric you said you grew up in san francisco right i i grew up in uh santa clara county uh, down south oh yeah. so have but, you but ever, i live in san francisco have you ever encountered some kind of uh either hate hate crime against yourself or some kind of really bad intention based on your race and yeah so there's all sorts of micro you know small microaggressions right that i think all asian americans are familiar with right but i think one of the the most concrete examples that comes to mind was that um i think some time ago when i was still in high school uh somebody painted um you know go, go back to china in front of my house's uh, driveway, you know, and, and you know, we don't know who did this. But, when uh, you when know, was that? When was that? When I was in high school. So let's see, it's been maybe fifteen years now. Oh, yeah, yeah. But do you, yeah. do you personally think it, it's this? It's a raise, rising trend, or it's something new? happening now is like is that the the a cr crime against us getting worse and worse so so hate crimes i think uh, against asians right ha have existed for for a very long time right and then there's documented history of asians being un you know unfairly treated and being attacked you know as far back as i think you know american yeah. history c can go right but with that being said, I, I do think that there's a there's been a rise over the last I think two years. Um, I think one in particular, uh, I think the coronavirus has shown people, um, has shown Americans right that um, you know our our sort of um, belonging in America right is is sort of dependent on on how things are going. And I think uh, the coronavirus has showed you know showed people that people's opinions of Asian Americans can can turn very quickly. So I think the coronavirus has led to a rise in uh, anti-Asian sentiment. Yeah. I think that's one. 
And then I, I, you know, I have to say Donald Trump, right, with some of the words that he said, right, calling it, uh, you know, Chinese virus, Kung flu, these types of terms, I think, sort of create a hatred against, um, you know, against Asian Americans too. I, I, you know, I saw a video not too long ago where a man uh, sprayed an Asian person with Febreze, right, because he thought that he had a uh, coronavirus, right. Um, I mean, that's that's clearly something that's attributed to recent events. Well, yeah. I, w I do want to share something with you, too. Like, uh, I read a, a paragraph from the uh, Stanford professor and very famous scholar, Thomas Sowell. He, he, he used to have this book called, like, I think it's called uh, Redneck Black and Liberal White. I think some, some uh, the title of the book. He mentioned one concept in his book is like, when, uh, let's say, th in the society, there's two group of people. They don't want to deal with each other directly. So usually there's another group. They are really good at, at a function as a bridge. Like, I think in this case, in our area, like Chinese American or Asian American really function as a bridge to some other groups, right? We, we do business and we do like serve other uh, public things then usually when things go smooth everybody is peaceful but when the supply and demand change dramatically and sometimes the social dynamic change shift dramatically so one side has this pressure towards the other as the intermediary or the the middle people the middle people suffer. And sometimes the pressure comes bo from both ends. I think yeah. in our case, maybe if you think we have this trend, like more crime against Asian people, that's probably one of the facts. I'm not saying it's all. Yeah, that's just what I want to share. <laughs> Do you yeah. want? No, I, I agree. And, and I think uh, Asian Americans being polarized is, is something that's you know very, very, I think real and as a consequence of what you've just talked about. Um, I think, uh, you know, I was looking at voting statistics of Asian Americans, uh, you know, in the last 2020 election, right? And, um, uh, you know, more Asian Americans came out and voted Democrat, right, than, than I think have ever before, right? You know, but at the same time, 34%, uh, I think, of Asian Americans also voted for Trump, right? And that's compared to only 16% back in 2016, right? So you see, you see they're, they're coming up on both sides, right? And I think that's a factor of, of uh, you know, Asian Americans sort of being in the middle and, and um, right, being, being pushed, uh, you know, to one side or the other. Yeah, I think that will conclude our conversation today. I'm so happy to have you today. Thank you for your time, Eric. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Thank you, Liam. Thank you, Liam. Yeah. I appreciate it. It's great to be here.